Good evening, everybody. This is Javier with The Real Javier Novoa, a channel, a platform, and a modality where we apply the principles of philosophy, spirituality, and mysticism to rapid lifestyle transformation. Today, I got an email, ladies and gentlemen, from a skeptic, from a person who's basically saying that the work that we do is incorrect. It's not only incorrect, it's harmful. Because according to him, we teach no effort, and you do need to make effort to be successful. Therefore, we're misleading people, and we're going to cause people not to be successful by following the information that we present on this channel. And so, I want to respond to that in a number of ways. And the first thing I want to say is that, of course, since the beginning of this channel, since we launched this, I have always said, do not follow my opinions, follow your inner authority, because the only arbiter of truth for you is your inner being and your inner authority. You have to constantly revert to that. And I've always taken an empirical stance. In my career as a business consultant, as well as in my years of studying and applying this material, I've always sought measurable proof. And by the way, we do have a business, as I announced a few videos ago, that we do have measurable proof that these modalities work and that they actually have measurable results in the world of business and in the world of accounting. Stay tuned for that in the next weeks because we are going to be presenting those numbers. But I've always taken the empirical approach and I've always said, I'm human and I may indeed be wrong in the way I apply techniques, in the way I understand information. I've never presented myself as an expert in anything. I'm a fellow student. And so I always hold up my claims to the rigors of proof and evidence, and we've taken an empirical stance. In fact, we follow the maxim of the great William James on this channel, and that is the only proof for the validity of a philosophy at the end of the day is, does it make your life better? If it doesn't make your life better, fling it against the wall, ladies and gentlemen. But the main points that I wanted to make, first of all, this uh, person mischaracterizes what we teach here, because we never say, do not take action. And I will refer you to my videos that I made a few weeks ago on action, in which we clarify this stance. Because we've always said, if you believe that you need to take a certain action and you don't take that action, and you don't resolve that dichotomy or inner conflict, then you will be kept from your intention or your goal because you're not taking the action that you think you need to take, and therefore that will be held away from you. This is a major principle in the law of attraction and the law of assumption. <clears throat> But we always say, do what needs to be done. In fact, do whatever it takes, but do it with the minimal effort and the minimal resistance. For example, you can mow a lawn and you can be listening to music and enjoy mowing that lawn and get it done. Or you can mow the lawn and you can be complaining about the circumstance surrounding you and hate mowing that lawn. All that we're saying is before you mow the lawn, get into alignment and then do what needs to be done. And you'll never have to stop yourself from doing any work that you believe needs to be done. What will happen is the universe will deliver aspects of it to you, perhaps while you're preparing to do the work that will vitiate the need for you to do that work and then you'll start seeing how this works. That's why when people give themselves to this, when they test it, they end up proving the validity of it in their lives. That's why we have so many practitioners. That's why I have so many clients and that's why our subscriber base is growing. That's why more and more people of business are embracing these modalities because ladies and gentlemen, it works and there's numeric and measurable proof that it works. Not only in the business world and in the world of rapid lifestyle transformation, which is my specialty, but also in the world of science and medicine. All you need to do is refer to the works 
of the great Dr. Joe Dispenza to see all of the peer-reviewed evidence on that front. The main crux of this, though, that I wanted to go into is something that we spoke about early on in this channel. And that was an explanation of the statement of the great Stoic philosopher and emperor Marcus Aurelius, where he said, providence or atoms. Ladies and gentlemen, I put to you the proposition that if this philosophy were not true, we would need to invent it and we would need to follow it. Anyways, Voltaire said, if God did not exist, we would need to invent him. And I'll tell you why. It is as a great introducer to the great uh, book by Joel Goldsmith, The Infinite Way said. He said, without this philosophy, ladies and gentlemen, life is just not quite worth living. So, providence or atoms, your main choice is, in approaching the world, is there a law and an order to it? Or is it, as the materialists say, just a random agglomeration of atoms? Well, if it were atoms, then it would be chaos and disorder, and no action that you would take would have any effect anyway. But as Marcus Aurelius said, if there's disorder on the outer, do not also let your mind be disordered. If there's disorder on the outer, why would we indeed do anything? Alan Watts talked about this, I believe, in The Way of Zen, when he was speaking about how the traditional Chinese Taoists used to take decisions and so on and so forth in, the, uh, in one of the great books uh, by the arrangements of bones and so, to, uh, so on and so forth and how those were arranged. And we could debate whether this is, is fortune telling or anything like that. But he said, okay, these people took random decisions, but you and I take decisions but when we reflect upon the cosmic scale of the universe, what causality could there be? What proof could there be that the sun is going to rise tomorrow when we are such a small microcosmic part of that great universe? What would make you think that this tiny bit of causation is going to hold up? And what makes you think that there's not a greater cause outside of that that could vitiate that in any second. It is as the great philosopher Hume said, where he proved that cause, cause and effect thinking is moot, because in order to prove that cause and effect will hold up, you have to have an infinite amount of observations, because this is inductive logic, ladies and gentlemen. Just because you have a hundred observations of something following another thing, what makes you think statistically that it's going to happen again after the hundredth time? Or it's like the great Eliyahu Goldrat of uh, Theory of Constraints talked about. Well, there's a turkey, right? And this turkey, every day he sees a man come and bring him food for about 60 days, right? So this turkey's excited. Every day he'll come, that man will come, and he'll bring him food. This happened like 60 days in a row. So on the 61st day, the man came, and of course the turkey uh, started getting excited. But... Instead of bringing him food, the man cut his head off. Because it's Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. But the turkey didn't know that. All the turkey knew was that uh, he observed a sequence of events and the same thing happened. So he assumed that the next thing would happen. Ladies and gentlemen, what makes you think that your causal reasoning holds water? And that just because cause and effect has been established in past series or sequences, that's going to happen today. So your quote-unquote scientific worldview, your inductive worldview, indeed your logical positivism, does not have a leg to stand on anyway. So it really is, at the end of the day, a subjective decision. As, as Einstein said, do you choose to live in a hostile universe or do you choose to live in a loving universe? Well, ladies and gentlemen, barring definitive evidence to the contrary, and like I said, I'm open to any evidence. I choose to live in the universe of love, and I choose to live from the heart. And then I'm going to try to sink my mind and my heart up 
and then I know that great results follow because they've always followed. Second of all, we teach people to go within, ladies and gentlemen. We teach people not to be dependent upon the outer circumstances. And this is good no matter which way you look at it. That's why we teach stoicism on this channel. Just from old-fashioned common sense, does it make sense if the circumstances of your life are bad? Does it make sense to still be able to go within or, and feel good, or does it make sense to walk around upset and depressed about that? I'd say whatever makes you feel good makes sense. Just going into everyday science, just going into sports psychology and so on and so forth, it's been documented and proven in peer-reviewed studies that people who are in a better mood and people who can ascribe meaning to what they're doing will do the things that are necessary to get to the finish line. But the people who are forcing themselves to do the things that are necessary suffer from burnout. This is also documented. And of course, this causes a host of physiological and medical issues and problems. So whichever way you stack it, okay, our teachings are good, like we said, unless you bring some kind of overwhelming proof to the contrary. As the great Marcus Aurelius said again, providence are atoms. Ladies and gentlemen, I choose providence. I choose to live my life in the assumption that what I do in here is going to manifest on the outer because that is law. The biblical scriptures prove this. All of the great religions of man, the quote-unquote dreamscape or dream world of man, as the great uh, Jung talked about, the great indigenous cultures, all of them, all of mankind, to some extent or the other, are agreed that within is without. As the great Kibalian talks about, that as above, so below, and all reality is mental. So it's a fundamental choice, ladies and gentlemen, what I invite you to do if you're a skeptic, test it for three days. That's what we invite our new students to do. Just generally go out into the world. Don't try to have a very specific desire immediately and have that materialize because it's like any skill. You have to practice at it. And if you're not practiced in football, don't expect to get on the field and win the Super Bowl within one day. No, you have to build up to it. But I'd recommend that you start with small things. Just wake up in the morning and say, you know what, universe? I want today to be a positive experience, and I want you to show me and prove to me all the ways that today can be a beautiful experience. Just own your day. And then what you do is you envision yourself at the end of that day, and you just say, you know what, today was a wonderful day. And just try to feel that as best you can. You're not going to be perfect at it, but just do the best you can and allow the universe to prove to you that this stuff works. Not definitive proof, because there is no definitive proof on the outer. And if you continue only seeking proof on the outer, then it'll start to break down. That's why we tell our advanced students, you've got to eventually go from stopping seeking proof to just being it and knowing it. But if you're a skeptic and you're just starting out with this, the universe will give you proof. Just ask it for proof. Ask God for proof. And I would advise you to just give yourself a chance to try this methodology out. That's my appeal to skeptics. That's our appeal here. And I'm always here to help. You can always ask me questions. You can join our Facebook group. You can always email me. And I am doing coaching calls also. I will walk you through this modality and we will establish goalposts. We'll establish measurable results that I will help you to attain. And not only will you prove this methodology to yourself, but you'll be a master manifester. And for the rest of your life, you'll know that you know that you know that what you create in here will manifest on the physical. So thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Like we said, email me for coaching calls. 
please subscribe and like to this channel because it's a way that we can get this information out to as many people as possible. There are going to be a lot of exciting videos coming up this week and into the weekend about the nitty gritty of rapid lifestyle transformation, about finding land, finding safe places to live, and being independent from a job and a boss as soon as six months to a year. Because ladies and gentlemen, the occurrences in society and in the world are calling for this. It's calling for this new man, this new human being who knows his or her power to stand up, to take a stand, to get off the prison grid and to be able to help as many people as possible through this coming transition. So with much love until tomorrow, this is Javier. We'll see you soon.